Photoshop Beta includes a new generative workspace that creates AI images from text prompts. I know, who cares? But it's actually a major leap forward. For one thing, it's super fast, 10 seconds or less. You can set in motion entire squadrons of images using what are known as variables, and instead of just chucking the results like so much utility-free ephemera, it preserves not just your artwork, but the relationship between the artwork and the text prompts globally beyond the context of an open image. What am I talking about? Watch. I'm going to start things off just by way of background with a command that's been available to us in Photoshop for about a year now called Generate Image. And what it is, is a direct connection to Firefly, which is Adobe's online AI tool. So you enter a prompt, whether in the properties panel or down here in the taskbar, and you let it rip and you get three variations the way things stand now. If I want more variations still, I would just click the Generate generate button and the amazing thing is how quick things are getting and so even when I'm just working with generate image right here which is slower than generative workspace it only takes about 15 to 20 seconds in order to get three more results now I will say I would like to see more enhancements to image quality especially where the noise is concerned do you see what I mean we get very noisy images sometimes Times, and a lot of color noise as well that I think actually kind of singles out Adobe specific brand of AI so it'd be nice to see things smoothed up of course there's ways to do that manually and I would like to see things less prudish I had originally requested that this be a motorcycle gang but of course I got shut down so I just said that they're they're riding souped up motorcycles there's always ways to get around it but just you know just a little note I'm not I'm not trying to be critical if you're the kind of person that likes to help Adobe out by reporting variations as being, you know, naughty or violent or what have you. The rest of us are begging you to stop doing that. We want, most of us, I really believe this, want more creativity, not less. In any event, that's what's going on there. And then if I wanted something different, then I would click on this icon down here at the bottom of the toolbox, notice that? And that's just one way to get to generate image. There's a couple of others, but basically the idea is Adobe is trying to push this feature. So I would enter a totally different prompt, let's say, and click generate and eagerly await the three variations that are you know, coming along very, very quickly if nothing else, and we'll see those variations over here in the properties panel, as well as down here in the taskbar. And you can see now we've got some very noisy results, including this junk. Do you, you know what I'm talking about? It's almost like there's weird halftone patterns in much of the art these days. And that's still a thing. I just want you to notice the image quality has not changed. It's the experience that has changed dramatically. And so one way to get to this new and much improved generative workspace is to click on that icon again and then click on this thing. Start using generative workspace, which implies that from here on out, you'll be using it. That's actually not the case. You'll have to keep clicking on that button. But another way to work, I think this is just amazing. I could close this image. I'm just going to close it and sure I'll go ahead and save the changes I don't really care about what I've done so far but notice now down here at the bottom of the toolbox the icon is dimmed I cannot apply generate generate image that is without an image to work with whereas if I go up to the edit menu there's generate image being dimmed but there's generative workspace being available so you don't even have to for, you could just launch Photoshop and get to work and that's what I'm gonna do and so in case you're already amazed take a moment to subscribe won't you because it just keeps getting better now we're not gonna see the stuff that we created using generate image so it's not really compatible back and forth yet however anything that you create using this workspace is available to you going way way back so notice it's not dependent upon the image you're working inside of it's dependent upon your account so it's global and you could take any of these and switch and swap them between different images which i think is totally great and then notice my gorillas just keep going on and on in fact if i couldn't find my gorillas for some reason i could go ahead and search by gorilla 
and I would find all the the various gorilla variations that I've created again outside the realm of any specific open image and it goes well well beyond that and so I'll start by getting rid of the search term here so we can actually see the new stuff I create and I will replace this prompt let's say with something different and unless I want all these stylistic variations right here, then I need to clear them out. But if you ever want to bring them back, if, if for example, I wanted to bring back this one right here, the all the styles that are associated with this dragon, I would just click use settings and that will load them all back up. Isn't that awesome? Anyway, I mean, this is some common sense stuff that one might argue we should have had for a while, but here it is and I'm grateful for it. Anyway, I'm going to replace that prompt and I'm going to clear out these styles. The only one I want to bring back is widescreen. So AR 16 by nine for aspect ratio. And I will just go ahead and click generate. Notice that this thing is set to the fast mode as by default, which means that you can expect results in anywhere from like 10 seconds going on actually it seems to be okay so it looked like it took about 11 seconds there but still it goes faster now it also by the way is going to give you a less thorough generative result so you may want to spend a few moments comparing fast mode being turned off just just from me to you but watch this this is like so radically cool notice that it's going to tell me that it would generate like four different variations because it does it generates four variations instead of three incidental but still you've got this thing add variable i'll go ahead and do that and it gives you a couple of brackets and i'm going to fill in those brackets with a bunch of different colors so blue orange yellow purple red green rainbow the reason i mention them all is because there's seven of them right and so notice the generate thing now reach generate 28 because after all i'm generating four variations of every single one of these variables hey real quick do you ever look at adobe's particular brand of ai and think Good grief, this stuff is so noisy, it must look fake to even the most casual observer. In part, that's because Firefly employs a diffusion model that reverse engineers noise as we're seeing here. Generative AI resolves most of that noise, but not all, in which case you can use some of Photoshop's oldest and most reliable filters to add some finishing touches. To learn how, join my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash deeknow. And now, back to some of the best of colorful cars and gorilla motorcycle gangs in Photoshop beta. So now that we have alternatives inside alternatives going on here, and so you might figure, well, great, now we've got to watch this thing take an hour and a half. In fact, they run coincidentally. Did you see how quickly that went? So as a result, there are my blue variations. There are the orange ones, the yellow ones, the purple ones, the red ones, and the green and, and rainbow ones as well. And then if you want to take a look at any one of them, just go ahead and click on it and that will zoom in. And then you can always just go back like so by either clicking that back button or you have these controls right here as well so you can see a detail view as well as a timeline view. The timeline view is gonna go back and back in time. Let's say I like this red car. I don't know, it looks pretty cool. And I wanna open it up inside Photoshop, then I would just click the open button right here. I make a special point of this because notice, even though, by the way, it doesn't take any credit as things stand right now, you don't lose any credits on these because it's beta. And so just feel you know, free to play with this as much as you like. But also it's a four megapixel image. It creates the image file itself. So you're not wondering if it's getting upsampled the way you do with the generate image command. And this is, because I just opened the one variation, we have a single variation associated with this generative layer. I could add more if I want to, and just by clicking the generate button at this point though, I'm requesting three more variations using, by the way, the generate image function, which operates independently of the generative workspace. I just want you to know that. So you're not necessarily going to see these guys populate back inside the workspace. So what I might do in this case is just throw this away. 
Just just close the image, say no, I don't want to save. Because everything, well, not those last three, but the other variations are already saved as part of the workspace. And so what I'm going to do is go up to the edit menu and choose generative workspace. And so this is yet another way that Adobe is, and I think a more clever way, frankly, that Adobe is saving your results as you go. So as opposed to making you save a cloud document or something like that, these things just get saved right here in, throughout all the documents. So it's document independent you can bring these into any image you want and then another thing you should know let's say i go back so that i'm seeing groups of cars at the same time and i want all the purple ones right there not that way i don't want to click on it i want to select each one of the purple cars could be more than the purple ones i'm just selecting multiple cars as you can see right here and then i could click oh it's down here add to so go ahead and click on that button is the way it works. And then a new document. I don't have a document open, so it's got to be new. And then they could each be on separate layers if you want. Or you could make them all variations inside of a single layer. That's totally up to you. At which point, if I click Add, then a moment later... It's going to go ahead and close the generative workspace once again, and I will see all of my purple cars as variations associated with the single generative layer like so. Okay, just one more thing I want to show you because I think the other stuff you can figure out on your own. I'm going to go up to the edit menu and choose generative workspace once again, and this time I am going to replace the prompt right there with not only my gorillas but also a bunch of different variables urban country cowboy construction worker tornado ch uh, chaser and pastry chef how many are those one two three four five six all right so that means we should get four times six which is going to be 24 sure enough that's what we're going to get but the difference is i'm going to turn off the fast mode because it doesn't take that much longer and i really do encourage you that's just going to mean instead of taking about 10 seconds to generate all the results it's going to take about 20 seconds again that's my experience your experience may vary but but once it does finally generate all the results, and you can see that it's gone a long way, we're already done with everything but the pastry chefs right there. I'm not sure I'm really convinced these guys are pastry chefs. <laughs> But, well, what these tornado chasers, they're cool. They're definitely chasing some tornadoes, right? And, uh, we, you know, we can check them out one at a time, and we can decide to add as many as we like as single layers, by the way. So I'm just going to select all the tornado chasers. They don't all have to be part of the same group. It's just like, you know what? Why don't I just go ahead and grab these guys, too? I don't know what they are. What are they? They're construction workers. Let's grab them. So the conceptual stuff where the variables are concerned are just limited by your imagination. And now I'll go ahead and add to this document, the one I was working on, Undone 11 here. And instead of separate layers, we'll do them as uh, eight different variations inside of a single generative layer. And a moment later, I will see that generative layer with all of its variations right here and actually you've got to say in terms of just sheer craziness these first few guys are really really great so what do you think super helpful feature or just more noise comment below and then subscribe and turn on notifications and don't forget for a few ways to smooth over some of the rough spots in your ai join me at patreon.com slash deke now and then go to deke.com and sign up for my always authentic newsletter i'm deke mcclellan this is deke now